There we go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the day. It's a beautiful Sunday here and we're all together and I'm so pleased to welcome you to a Sunday morning service with our dear Reverend Phil Pearson. We are so lucky to be in his presence and to have him here to share his wisdom with us. What a beautiful day. And we know today that when two or more are gathered in his name, I am there. Here we are in the midst of that abiding, beautiful presence, Jesus the Christ. And in that presence of light and peace and joy and love and life and substance that is ever within, about, around, before and after, always beside us. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jackie Schultz, and I'm your prayer chaplain here at Capital City Unity. And I want to welcome you on this gorgeous Sunday morning to our service in the middle of September, or kind of actually in the beginning of September. But boy, is time fleeting and fastly moving toward the fall. A little housekeeping here. I want to make sure that you check your website at capitalcityunity.org where we have information about the upcoming services, also a link to the past services so you can revisit anything that you enjoyed from Capital City Unity. And if you have any requests at all, anything that you'd like us to do, talk about, investigate, anything, please email us at capitalcityunity at gmail.com. We are so very lucky. We have a lovely woman who helps us. Her name is Samantha. And every time she gets an email of need or anything else, she contacts us immediately. So just know that your conduit for communication is always our email. And if you need me at any time, if you have an illness or if you're celebrating or if you're in need for the prayer chaplain, please email us at capitalcityunity at gmail.com. I get that email the same day and I can get back to you right away unless I'm working. Uh, and even that sometimes, because I'm with Jack Benson and I think a lot of you know and appreciate the wonder of Jack Benson. We study all the time, even though he can't be with us in person, he is certainly with us in spirit. Okay, we have our first song for today, and that is Ready for a Miracle. I know we all are ready for miracles in our lives, and that's on page 346. I'm ready for a miracle, page 346. Take it away, Eric.
boy, I'm ready. I'm ready any day for a miracle, anything good. As Phil said this morning, live in an expectation of good. The daily word today is beautiful. The daily word today is about caring. I am here and I care. Sometimes my heart goes out to a friend or even a stranger who is struggling. Other times my heart breaks when I learn of another's devastating news. In those moments, I feel the urge to help. I pray affirming healing, peace or comfort. I may offer financial support or material goods. I might call on the phone or visit in person. Even so, I may feel my efforts are not enough, especially when the needs are great. But the impulse to care, that impulse to care is in so many people. We need to remember that. We need to remember that the activity of God is streaming through so many hearts and hands in this world, and we join them. And as we join my efforts, our efforts with theirs, we lift them up, even in the most dire situation. We are caring presence, ready to help, serve, and love. From Thessalonians 1, verse 2, so deeply do I care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also of ourselves, because you have become very dear to us. You have become very dear to us. Can everyone hear me? Nod. We okay? The activity of God is streaming through so many hearts and hands. Charles Fillmore wrote about Jesus in his book, Jesus Christ Heals. Jesus had faith in God, and this faith gave him faith in all men. Spiritual understanding reveals the universality of all things. From the teaching of Jesus, it is clear that he fully accepted the proposition that God is our resource and that all things are provided by our Father. All things are provided for us by our Father. Faith-filled people all over the world hold these truths in their hearts. Every time we pray or help others, to contribute to the greater good, even in small ways, we are joining our hearts and our actions with so many others. And this energy radiates throughout the planet. I hope you know that. I hope you know that we are powerful, very powerful prayer warriors. And we join with unity all over the world when we pray. And this energy radiates into the ether, into the cosmos, and around our planet. Faith heals us and allows us to bring that good into our lives. This is the gift that allows us to be prayer warriors. We are the healers, the helpers, the listeners, the compassionate caregivers who love, serve, and remember, we love, we serve, and we remember. For there is truly only one presence, one power, and one love. God, the good, omnipotent. And this love fills us and sustains us throughout our lives. Now for our affirmations, which we all know. And when you can repeat them after me, the minute I finish, or you can say them with me twice. There is only one presence, one power, and one love active in my life. God the good, omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence, one power, and one love active in my life. God the good, omnipotent. And for all those that we love, 
that are on our hearts today and always, family, friends, people that we love, people that we help, people that we cherish. There is only one presence and one power, one love active in their lives, your life, God the good, omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence, one power, and one love active in your life, God the good, omnipotent. And for this ministry, we are so grateful that we have this time together and that this beautiful ministry has come into our lives, that we can share our experiences and our love with each other every Sunday and all week as I think about all of you, all week and hold the high watch. There is only one presence, one power, and one love active in this ministry, God the good, omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence, one power, one love active in this ministry, God the good, omnipotent. And today for our beautiful planet, that the world that holds us steady in this vast and vaster than we ever imagined universe, as we pray today for peace, for higher consciousness, and for love to spread together with all of our brothers and sisters in all nations. And we say there is only one presence, one power, and one love active in the world today. God the good, omnipotent. Together, there is only one presence and one power, one love active in the world today. God the good, omnipotent. Today, we bless the names of the people and the pets that are in our prayer box. Today, that prayer box is virtual, but you can see that beautiful wooden box sitting there and know that every prayer that's in that prayer box gets sent to Unity, our Unity headquarters in Kansas City, Missouri, and they pray for those 30 days after we send them to them. So know that you are being held in prayer we see all of those that you pray for in the light, and we know that divine order will provide them the support and the comfort that they need, as we are all children of God. Dear Mother, Father, God, today, as we celebrate our time together, let us renew our commitment to follow the teachings of our way shower, Jesus Christ, and that we may always find inspiration from within, from the words of truth that open our consciousness to the inner divine presence and fill our lives with hope and love and compassion and understanding so that we may share this divine guidance with our world. Thank you, God. Amen. Announcements, I have a couple. Next week, we will be on Zoom again with our dear Reverend Phil Pearson, followed the following week by Reverend Carolyn Warnamunday, who will be in person as well as on Zoom. Make sure you check the bulletin. It's sent out every week on Tuesdays and Saturdays for a reminder. Also, I wanted to make sure that you all knew about Unity World Day of Prayer, which is coming up on September 13th and 14th. It's a 24 hour prayer vigil. And this year is the 30th anniversary of the World Day of Prayer. This year is about the heart of healing. I open my heart to healing. There's a service from Unity Headquarters and it is on the 13th of September at five o'clock our time here in California. And you can go on unity.org and you can register to be on Zoom for that service. So be sure and do that. And also one more thing I'd love to ask you, take an hour during that 24 hour period, even a half an hour, maybe just a half an hour, maybe just 15 minutes, sit in silence and meditate on the heart of healing and send your energy with all of those that will be 
pray, praying and meditating at that time. It's now our time to head into meditation and we're going to sing the song that's on page 251, page 251. And I wish I could hear all of you sing and I wish you could hear me sing. And we'll just suffice with the music, flow, spirit, flow on page 251. How beautiful that is. Now it's time to come together. Come together in meditation. Close your eyes if you'd like to. Just let the world go away. Let it float away right now. Ah, take a few deep breaths. Breathe in and out. In and out. Release any tension that there is in your body. Let it go. Let it go and listen. Listen to that still, small voice in the silence. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Be still and know that I am God. Let your heart beat slow. Let go of today. Let go of anything yesterday. Let go of tomorrow and just be here right now. Just this. Let your mind be at rest. Relax into the awareness of spirit that is all around you, blessing you comforting you. This is the quiet place. Enter, enter that quiet place and let the stillness wash over you. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you as we commune with our God. Let your body be filled with a sense of well-being and of peace. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. God is there. God is here. In prayer, we enter that quiet place where we can commune for a time with that still, small voice that whispers to us, whispers to us that you are loved. 
you are cherished. You are a radiant child of God. Perfect. Absolutely perfect in all ways. Our dear Reverend Dorothy Pearson wrote a beautiful poem, The Quiet Place, This Quiet Place. I want to share just a piece of that. I come to this quiet place and found you waiting for me, God. I hadn't heard you call. I had no seeming need at all but I just felt guided to be still. And here you are, here you are. This is our quiet place, beautiful and serene, gorgeous, where we can spend a few precious moments with God. Listen in the silence. And the love we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Peace is ours. Peace is here. Love is here. We are one. God blesses me now in every way, and I trust him to guide my every day. The Father of all. For this sacred time and for the blessing of being here together with God, we say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. As you slowly bring yourself back from that too short and too precious of a time, take a nice deep breath and release. Another one. Breathe in and release. Come back to the room. Open your eyes. Maybe move around a little bit stretch. Ah, what a gorgeous day. Well, here we are with our wonderful and dear Reverend Phil Pearson, who has a lesson for us today. And I believe it is called Phil. I know I wrote it down. <laughs> it doesn't what matter. Did I, what did I write down? <laughs> well, as I say, I usually don't think in terms of title. So anyway, that's okay. Go ahead, Phil. Okay. Am <laughs> I coming through okay? Yes, you are. All right, good. Oh, well, here it is. Phil's title is Who Has the Power? <laughs> Oh, boy. I think we already know the answer to that question, but go take it away, Phil. <laughs> Thank you, dear. I know that uh, folks are so blessed by Jackie's opening of our 
program and the work she leads us in her prayer thought because she is the prayer chaplain for our ministry and I know it would encourage many of you who might need some uh, spiritual support to feel free to call and contact Jackie and get that support. So thank you, Jackie, for being that center of strength, spiritual strength uh, available to people. Well, once again, I feel privileged to be a part of the consciousness of my former ministry, which was in Sacramento, California. And uh, still is and i always feel in a sense like a coming home when i'm with you on these sundays i also found myself thinking today of how blessed we happen to be those of us that a spirit is drawn to live in the particular area we live today so much of our country has been plagued as it were by incredible uh, changes in their weather and there's a new storm brewing as most of you know and when i am aware that's happening i always try to send my blessing to the people there and i take a moment to give thanks to the spirit that somehow it has guided my life to be in this what i think is a remarkable area of our country in this time and day so i know you appreciate that too and gives you a, a center of strength to do and be prayer support for folks who are experiencing the many climate and difficulties that they have in the weather, not only in our country, but right now around the world. Well, to lead into our sharing today, I want to tell you what I do with some of my time every day. I usually take some time early in the day to check in with the stock market. And I do that not because I have any stocks. I did, but I don't have any now. So that's not the reason. And um, I also uh, don't, um, Well, I don't do it because I was once a regional manager for Standard & Poor's, which many of you know is probably the greatest um, investment advisory firm in the world. And so, but that's not why I do it either. The reason I check in with the stock market almost on a daily basis is to see what the money people of the world are choosing to feel is important because that tells me a lot about what is going on in the consciousness of our nation. And most recently, as I have tuned in, I have discovered that the hottest thing in the stock market is something called AI securities. AI securities, which means artificial intelligence. Those companies in our country and actually around the world who are investing themselves in developing this incredible ability to uh, function in a ordinary world with a consciousness of intelligence, but it doesn't come from people, it's coming from a machine, coming from scientific machines that are able to respond to situations and to people in the form of an intelligence response. And uh, if you've uh, if you've ever tuned in yourself to it, you just find yourself amazed that if you say uh, to the uh, source of the artificial intelligence, "Give me some ideas on uh, how I should respond to the terrible things happening in the world today," well, you have to think, how would they know? What? They don't. Well, that machine would know what's going. All you all amazing thing is suddenly you'll hear this response that comes so fast and it'll give you an amazing intelligent response to how somebody would respond to that question. Might not be your perfect response, but you have to admit that it's it's intelligence and intelligent and it is often very meaningful. So those uh corporations that are finding out more and more how to use this 
is are obviously extremely popular today. But this also says to me that it is interesting that money flows in our nation around the world, but thinking of our nation, it flows in the direction of the latest scientific discoveries and outworkings. And prior to this, of course, this has found our telephone and the internet and all these things we watch. And it isn't hard to make a little jump in appreciation to think, wow, science is really creating a world for us that's fantastic. And we think, well, it's true. I and mean, it's interesting though, that actually you and I come into the world as students, intellectual students of science. I have found myself thinking one of the first things that you learn as a child, they, they'll hand you a glass of water, you say, and you, the, the adult will say, now watch it, dear, watch it, hold on, don't, don't relax your grip or your glass will fall to the ground. Whoa, you just shared with that child an intellectual awareness, a scientific discovery called gravity that came years before that anything that is unsupported is going to go down. If it has any weight at all, it will go down. Gravity was discovered. And so as a child, you and I are fed this intellectual food as what of the gifts of science have given us through the years. We are components as we continue to grow and unfold of the world of science. All of that insight is stored in our brain. This is the seat of our intellectual input. That's pretty well demonstrated that it is a brain that contains and maintains our intellectual awareness and the activities of science. Some of us, of course, um, struggle with this, as I do with some of the latest things uh, on the internet and with my telephone, and I'm so constantly being told the latest thing that you can get is this. And I think, oh, no, I, I can't even figure out what the light, latest late thing was. And now here's this one. And then I just sort of relax about it. And I am certainly not an expert in any of those things, but I am aware that there is a, a generation that have come after me and will continue that are able to grasp that intellectually and to become, in a sense, a servants of science, appreciator of science, but also as a, the servants, servants of science. You know, um, I don't think it would be a jump in our understanding for me to say that we would seem to live in a world in which science is truly growing in dominion of our universe. I mean, I also said day after day, but month after month almost, there's a new scientific insight or a brainstorm which seems to lead us into a greater capacity to be in charge of the world we live in. And so in this sense, again, science is a type of God for us today. But some of you who might have been listening to me when I was in person many years ago in the ministry in Sacramento, you may have heard me share something that I just discovered at that time, which is the simple fact that science has told us amongst their discoveries that they only know 4% of what makes up our universe. 96% of the universe is an enigma to science. It's called dark matter. Dark matter 
And I've suddenly, <laughs> I've suddenly lost that dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter and dark energy. That dark matter and dark energy, and it's called dark because science doesn't understand what it is, makes up 96% of the universe we live in. I can't exaggerate that enough to say, whoa, that is in no way the average human being thinks. When they think about well, yeah, science is really coming to grips and opening more and more doors to take charge of the universe we live in. But science is only fooling with 4% of the universe. 96% isn't known at all. I mean, I don't know how I could underline that more and for two reasons, how important that is, and secondly, how few people know that. I would think if you stopped the people on the street and said, did you know that science only knows about 4% of what makes up the universe? They'd say, look at you and say, you're kidding. But that is a fact. And I shared that, as I say, many years ago when I first came across it. Um, Gosh, I don't know, well, maybe 30 years ago. But I've double-checked it in preparation for our lesson today and say, that's still the existing fact. Science operates under the realization that they don't really know what the 96% of the universe is made up of. But you know what? When I first shared that with you, I told you then what it, that 96% is made up of. I, poor, not poor, excuse me, uh, a lonely union minister addresses the sciences of the world and say, I know that. The answer is that 96% is made up of the living presence of God that lives in a mind presence everywhere in the universe. And you can't just penetrate that God mind presence by thinking, a lot, I want to do that. What does that say to us? Where should the world and we be giving our attention to? Obviously, if you, if we went into, I don't know, suddenly in my head, I said, what if we went into a cluttered room? What are you going to work on in that room to get it straight? Are you going to pick a little 4% of the corner and fix that all up and say, whoa, I've straightened the room up? No. If you have to make a choice, you'd take the 96% and you'd clean it up. And then you'd have almost a perfect room except for that little 4%. We, because of our real lack, and when I say we, I'm talking about the human race, we, because of our, our real lack of total understanding of this, put our attention primarily on the 4%, not the 66. We put our attention on the world of scientific discovery and excitement. And unfortunately, it tends to drive so much of the use we make of our energy. To me, it's a little sad in a way that, as I say, if I want to find out how to do the latest thing with my computer or my telephone, it says, I just go to a teenager because those kids really know what makes it work. But that um, area of our lives falls within the realm of the 4%. Does the teenager know about the 96%? Well, because I've said it is the presence of God, and it is primarily the presence of God nature, which is pure love. Pure love. It isn't that there isn't an awareness of that God presence. Fortunately, the religions of the world have given humankind an opportunity to give some attention to that God presence. But 
uh, as we have unfolded presently the human race, obviously 96% of the human attention is given to the 4% because it's the most exciting part of life. If there's anything I think that's common to us humans, we generally like excitement. We generally like our life to have energy and excitement. And so we tend to move and support and use our time that gives us an energetic experience in our life, whether that's being with people or traveling or studying, whatever our particular thing is that turns us on. We want to be turned on. We want this excitement in our life. Unfortunately, today, the 4% of the wisdom in the world and the energy in the world is not giving us the right answers. Because the 96% is, as I said, is the awareness of the God presence and of the nature of that God presence, which is love. So what does that mean for you and me? Want to throw your computer out the window and don't do that, you will lose me. <laughs> do you want to throw your telephone out the window? You know, I ah, I want to go back to the old uh, smoke signals to communicate. No, we don't want to rule science out of our lives at all. It's just where do we give as a source of power of all that we want for goodness in our lives? Where do we recognize that power source? And therefore, where do we give our most energy? We give our most energy not to being the very latest in, in the technical uses of the latest scientific discovery. If ideally, it'd be nice if we all learned that as we went along, especially if we're living in a world that's dominated by those sciences. We want to know about that. But we need to know, most importantly, the real power source of life is in that invisible presence of love. So what I need to do in my life is to give as more energy than anything else to being one with love, to be loving, to be loving. Well, that sounds simple enough, I'm gonna be loving. But what really does that mean? Does it mean necessarily doing good for others? I mean, are you just taking care of yourself? And why aren't you out there walking up and down the street of the homeless every day and doing something? If you really loved them, you would. Well, it get pretty crowded down on that street if we all went thinking that's the only way to get in touch with the love presence or with the God presence. No, every time you and I Think the good only. That which speaks of our oneness with that presence, that God presence. Every time we do that, we are operating in the dimension of love. Whenever we affirm anything of the nature of God in our life in any way, we are attuning ourselves, or rather we are making an expression of love. If I love God, and again, I come back to this so often, God, Jesus gave us it all in the first commandment. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul and mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And again, as I've often said, and don't forget that all of that was equal. You and I have to learn to love ourselves as much as we love others. And so, again, it isn't just out there doing good for other people physically. It is primarily, it may be a part of that if you're guided to that, but the primary thing is to think in terms of the nature of God's presence, which was all good, all positive. As Jackie affirmed earlier in our time, it is a matter of expecting good. That is a... Uh, an expression of our appreciation of the love presence in our lives is an expectation of good. You and I can't believe that God is the power of the universe 
and expect the worst. That <laughs> they're incompatible. And yet, I, as I say that, I know I'm subject to that at times. Living in this, in quotes, human world, it's very difficult to walk the path. If it wasn't difficult, folks, it, we would have already reached a point of the nirvana or of heaven on earth. We're in process of that. And part of our learning is to realize the greatest power on earth is the God presence. And the greatest way in which we can express that God presence is to think in terms of the reality of the presence of all good, of all love. I, I, I have chestnuts that I've carried with me through my years, chestnuts of insight. One of my chestnuts that I've always loved is when I was a kid, there was a wonderful uh, tamer of the tigers and the lions. And uh, his name was Beatty, Clyde Beatty, I believe was his whole name. And I remember as a young person that he said, if you were, have love, and this is a man who had stalked the jungles, you know, and was famous for being able to capture and work with uh, tigers and lions. He said, if you were able to walk through the densest jungle, jungle in the world, filled with the wildest of animals, and had nothing but love in your heart, not a thing would touch you. I always I remember that from the time I was such a young person, because I know it's true now as an adult. I know it's true to be able to have that consciousness that expects the good only, that radiates a sense of at one moment, which is what love is, a one moment with all it is. This is a, a heart, a, a soul who indeed can walk through any situation, be it dense jungles filled with wild animals or human beings who are out to use you. You can go anywhere if you're one with the power of the almighty, the greatest power of, on earth, which clearly fills up 96% of our physical universe. Of course, in the absolute sense, God, is all, is all. But our universe within that God mind has a physical dimension. And that physical dimension tells us that God's expression in this physical universe is 96%. It's all about God. It's all about oneness. It's all about the good. So one of the reasons that I am dedicated to the teachings of unity is that I think that there is no movement that offers a clearer and simpler application of what we're just talking about today. That if you want to be attuned to the 96th presence of power in the universe, you want to work at thinking the good only. And I give many lessons, of course, just on the fact that you are what you think. That's the, a basic unity concept. The power of consciousness is all powerful. And therefore, what you think is what you will receive in your life. And so why follow the 4% of insight that is so intellectually wise that says to us, there are certain physical uh, principles that bind you, limit you, determine how you have to go. But the 96% presence says, walk the way in which I lead you. If you just listen, I love Jackie's use of Dorothy's poem today. That was, I just, one of my favorites of her poems. Uh, she, I, I get still, and there you are, God. There's no, I have no great need, but just the moment I get still, I discover there you are. And so that is true for each of us. We live and move and have our presence in the midst of the 96% of the universe, the authority and power of it, which is God. 
and we have only to give ourselves to expressing the nature of that power, which is love. Well, I conclude today by just saying I love all of you. I love it that you've chosen the path that you've chosen in unity. I think it has so much to offer us because it's basically very simple. Nothing complex. You don't have to to study for years to apply its most basic principles in your life, which can be absolutely as mind-changing for you and I as individuals as are some of the scientific breakthroughs that take place. So God bless you, friends, today, and know that we are indeed one in that 96% of the universe. We are one in God, one with each other. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Phil. That was just riveting and, and absolutely true. We are so lucky, all of us. We are so blessed that we found unity. We came from all kinds of different places to come together in this path with our lives. And we are just the luckiest people in the world, aren't we? Now it's time for our love offering virtual today so take that love offering and that you have for this ministry and hold it in your hand and rub it because we know that it expands the more we give it the more it expands and let's bless that love offering today whatever form it takes knowing that you are supporting this beautiful ministry for hours however long we have our time together we bless it we love it and we know that this goes to greater good our love offering today is reflective of your consciousness of love. And we have so much gratitude toward Capital City Unity that brought us to Phil Pearson. And I know there's a lot of you that were lucky enough to have him in your lives before Capital City Unity at Christ Unity all over the world where those two traveled. Boy, spreading that great gift, God, that is love. So let's repeat, I give in love because I love to give. God is the source and I am the channel. Together, I give in love. I give in love. I, I love, love to, give. to give. God is the, God source, is the source and I am the channel. Now it's our time to come together and we're going to sing our closing song, which is love is the only power. Love is the only way. And after we sing, unmute all of your mics so we can hear the cacophony of the prayer for protection. Eric? Love is the only way. Love, love, love. our love. We are circle bread. Love is the only love. Unmute your mics. Everyone, let's say the prayer for protection. The, the light stop. of God, God surrounds us. us. The, the love, love of God, God enfolds us. us. The, the power, power of God checks us. 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 And the presence, the presence of God, of God watches, watches over us. Over us. Wherever, Wherever we are, God is, God is and, and all is well. Thank you, God. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Thank you, Claudia, coming here from Hawaii. How beautiful is that? Oh, my goodness. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. We deeply appreciate your presence. And we know that your light shines so beautifully. So go out there and shine 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 bless you all thank you thank you <laughs>
Bye bye. Good <laughs> job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thank Jackie. you. <laughs> Love you all. Nice. Love you. Nice seeing you all. Bye. Bye, Kathleen. I didn't get to say hi. That's okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's all God's time, really.